in chapter three, we're called to choose the future. It's kind of a strange choice to make, because if you think about it, we're going to the future no matter what. In fact, whether you choose the future or not, the future is choosing you. But strangely enough, a lot of times we actually choose the past instead of the future, or we choose the present instead of the future. Uh, recently, I, I was visiting this congregation, and and it was, it was so surreal for me. It was on the West Coast, and what people would consider the cutting edge part of of culture and society. And and there was a pipe organ, and everybody was wearing robes, and 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 the music was was brilliantly written, but it was probably 200, 300 years old. And, and it struck me how uh, in this room, most of the people were um, 50 years and older. Many of them were 60, 70, 80, 90 years old. And, and that the entire expression of faith was being designed for the people who were in their 80s rather than the ones who were 18. No one would be in that room right there saying, we're choosing the past. But the reality is that they were actually choosing the past rather than choosing the future. We, we understand we have so many choices to make in, in life. We have to make choices whether we need healthy or unhealthy. We're going to make choices about what kind of career we're going to have, what kind of job we're going to have, where we're going to live, who we're going to marry. In fact, the most important things we'll ever do in life is to choose. In fact, the most spiritual activity you will ever engage in is to choose. Sometimes we might say, oh, no, no, it's, it's more spiritual to pray or more spiritual to, to read the scriptures or more spiritual to, to be in church. But the reality is that you have to choose first to pray. You have to choose first to dive into the scripture. You have to choose to be in community. That all those things are the end result of the choices you've made. But there's a bigger choice that has to be made. You have to choose the future. You have to make a decision to leave the past behind and to begin to be part of a future that's being created by the choices you're making right now. Sometimes we hold on to the past because the past is so wonderful. I mean, isn't it hard to move on when you've had the best experiences in your life? I, 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 I think sometimes we hold on to the past because that's where we met God. We remember the music we were listening to when we met God. We remember the environment we were in. We remember the, how the world felt. And we try to hold on to that world as if God was still living in the past. Though God met you in the past, that's not where he's going to meet you tomorrow. The only place God's going to meet you tomorrow is in the future. Sometimes we hold into the past, not because it was so wonderful and that memory holds us. Sometimes we, we hold into the past because it was so painful. And it's not really us holding on to the past. It's almost as if the past is holding on to us. Uh, it, it, we hold on because of bitterness. We hold on because of hurt. We hold on because of discouragement, because of fear. Sometimes what happens is the past leaves us so wounded that we're terrified, that we're afraid of the future. We're convinced that there is no future because of what we experienced in the past. But here's, here's the great danger. Your future is not supposed to be simply an extension of your past. That if you don't let go of your past and break free of the past, your future will be your past. And so you'll be living a life of regret rather than a life of hope. You have to choose the future. It doesn't simply happen by accident. The future is coming, whether you like it or not. And the question isn't even whether you will create a future. The question is, what kind of future will you create? Will the future come at you and you live your life as if you were a victim, powerless to make a difference in the world? Or will you choose the future? Will you create a future that is the best reflection of the kinds of dreams and hopes that come when you live a life filled with inspiration and courage, when you know that it is God-breathed. I am absolutely convinced there is a future that God has for you. The question will be, will you have the courage to leave the past and create the future? All of us have a choice to make. Will you choose the future?